now invite you to watch the next part of this insightful conference entitled The Secrets of Venus Part 11 of 12 on Between Master and Disciples given in English on August 29, 2009 in Los Angeles, California, USA. Have you ever dreamed of a place far away from it all? Where here you bring the soft and clean children play in the green. Where the sounds of guns never power your dreams. Actually, I have another beautiful news. It's yes. from Panama. That Good, but no more tears, all right? No. <laughs> okay. It's a, a beautiful news from Panama from um, a sister. Yes. Our association member from Panama, yes. she was named yesterday Eco Champion of the Month uh -huh. by the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute Carbon Committee. Wow. Yes, and Bravo. this committee was formed to help the Institute conserve energy and remain carbon neutral. Wow, wow. It's a renowned institute and she's the first person ever to receive this honor. And she received this honor because of her promotion of veganism as the mm -hmm. best way to reduce carbon emissions. Mm giving her colleagues a lot of good information from the SupremeMasterTV.com website. Mm, wow. So that's a very beautiful news. And she was featured uh, yesterday in the newsletter. Yes. And they also include our website in it. And she received uh, a lot of calls from colleagues, from uh, distinguished scientists, and mm -hmm. uh, even from directors. And they congratulate her and express their big interest in veganism. Wow, that's yeah. the best part. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. Better than all the congrats. <laughs> <laughs> ah, wonderful. Send her my congrats also, okay? Yes, so thank you so much, Master, for uh, walking through her work and uh, to touch everybody. And yeah, thank you ever You're so welcome. much. You're welcome. Just a uh, pure instrument also does help, you see? Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Master. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello, Master. Hello. Hi, how are you? Uh, Hi. I'd like, like to share a story too. Um, uh, this happened at uh, the beginning of this year. Uh, the disciples in Costa Rica gave some material from Supremacy Television to... The son of the... Director of the main TV channel in Costa Rica. Yes. We didn't hear anything about them for a long time. Suddenly we hear in the news that the director of the, this main TV channel became vegetarian. Oh, wow. And Bravo. the next thing we, wa we watch on TV, is a three parts program about how cows produce so much methane and how meat industry is destroying the planet. And yes. this make a huge uh, uproad uh, from the meat industry, and they've removed all the advertising from that TV channel, the meat advertising. Oh, okay, and she said okay. uh, she didn't care. She didn't care wow, about if didn't they care. move it or not. And Wonderful. they are open now uh, to keep going in this direction, supporting this, uh, this wow. idea of uh, environmental protection through uh, vegetarianism. Wow, wow, bravo. God bless, Very good news. bless your country. <laughs> yes. Thank you. It's master. getting there, huh? It's getting there. Everywhere, yes. People are good, you know, only if they are informed, then they will do it. It's just they don't know. Even the media doesn't always know everything. You see, they are so used to doing their way, you know, uh, giving whatever advertisement uh, there is, and uh, they don't um, have time to do research in this direction because um, most of the media before, they just wrote about other things, you see. And right now they know it, and then they concentrate on it. Yes, I wish all media join hands. I've seen it more and more now a day, more and more all the time. And I'm very, very happy. 
the feedback is very positive and when you talk to people you realize that the only thing they need is information yes they just understand yes so that's why when you think about doing this you're 100% positive <clears throat> that it will happen because we just need to give them the information it's, and yeah. God <laughs> God arranged things incredibly well because one time we we gave a lady a flyer in Brazil Yes. And then she said, yes. oh, I got this flyer in Spain, the same one. Oh. But I didn't read yes. it, and now I'm going to read it. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's good. It's good. good. <laughs> no, it's Cape Cod. It's, <laughs> it's incredible. Good, thing, good things can never be done too many times. Yes, right? that's true. Yeah, thank you. Good, good job, good job. Thank you. Bravo. I'm writing letters and giving information to all the presidents and the world leaders and industry, corporate heads and all that, and I'm hoping it also have an effect, you know? I'm still writing and giving them info as well, not just the letter, but all the condensed info, yeah. And telling them to watch more on Supreme Master Television. <laughs> it's going to help somehow, yes. Okay. Oh, Master, is there anything else that you would like to share about the two Venuses that are still, still with us? Oh, what else do you want to know? <laughs> um, how, how come they, they survive and the other Venuses didn't? How, how yes. does their evolution allow them to continue? Yeah, because they are more virtuous. The other two Venuses, they were uh, living a vicious life. They live in vice. They did not uh, uh, know God. They did not respect anything that they couldn't see. And they concentrated more on developing their material comfort. Therefore, they had too much comfort. They had anything they wanted. Everything was almost like heavenly life, except devoid of spiritual, moral, and divine quality. And not only that, they persecuted anyone who dared to oppose them or mention anything about the invisible quality of heaven, yes, or about God, or anyone who is living a virtuous life, this is like a state enemy. They hunt them down, they kill them mercilessly. It's a terrifying place to live for anyone who has a little conscience. Their conscience is zero, yes, their moral standard is zero. Their tolerance for God and divinity is zero. So it was because of this. And the meat diet combined that destroyed the other two planets. Whereas the two surviving planets, although they still have uh, some percentages of meat eaters, one fourth, 25% people still have meat, but very little, less degree. Not like they have it every day or three meals a day. It's not like that. Even then, they have reverence in their heart, yes? And they are trying to also go into a more merciful lifestyle, compassionate vegan diet. So the balance is very, very well in check, you see? <laughs> uh, Three-fourths, they're vegan, and one-fourth are uh, meat-eaters, but very less degree, very less quantity. And then they all worship God, and they revere the spiritual persons or beings or practitioners. They encourage moral behavior within their society. And they teach moral obligation, a compassionate lifestyle, merciful attitude in school, from kindergarten already, by example and by positive encouragement. In school, they teach children already how to be kind to each other, how to be kind to their planet, how to be kind to other co-inhabitants, like animal people, you see? So animal people and humans living in harmony with each other. And children have been taught moral standards, merciful behavior. So they grow up, become wonderful, citizens, yes? The meat eaters and the meat providers, they live in a remote area, <laughs> you know, shamefully, 
far away from the sight of the people. And they don't encourage that in public. Just like right now, we forbid smoking in public. Over there, they forbid meat eating in public. Therefore, even the meat eaters, they feel ashamed and they know it's wrong. And even though they still have some, they always try to minimize it. Yes, Master. Meat eater over there is allowed, <laughs> but it's like they're outcast <laughs> and they feel it. Some people are not as developed as others, so they just tolerate it. But because the, the numbers do not outweigh the vegans, therefore their planetary merit and uh, peaceful atmosphere is prevalent. Their planetary merit is in balance, outweighs the balance. Yes. So even though one-fourth of the people are meat eaters, you know, very little or less, still they are covered by the three-fourths of the others' benevolent energy. You see what I mean? Yes, Master. And because the society as a whole already supports the compassionate vegan diet and other meat eaters, even though they do it, they know it's wrong. And so they have repentance in their heart also. So that's uh, the way they preserve their planet. Not because they wanted to, maybe, because they, they know it's a way of life and they have been brought up like that since they were children. So they become very powerful in uh, spiritual merit and thus they can protect their planet. If all these Venus population, of course, 100% of them are vegetarian or vegan, then their plan would be even better, better than just survive, prosper and progress and be technologically super like that. But it will be superior. It will be just like heaven in the physical dimension. Right now, it's, of course, like 80% heaven, hey? <laughs> or 70%. But if they all become vegan, then, of course, their planet will experience much more <laughs> uh, upliftment in the uh, spiritual dimension. Yes, Master. Master, I was actually wondering if uh, there would ever be a time when we might get some programming, maybe some cultural programming from Mars or something like that on SNTV. Programming? A show or two. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, why not? Maybe one day, hey? Maybe one day. I hope so, Master. <laughs> when we earn it, when we earn it, when we earn the friendship, of all our neighboring or some of our more advanced neighboring planets, when we cease to be a threat to the universal harmony, when we cease to be uh, a frightening group of, uh, you know, scary population, then other planet beings will visit us without invitation even. It's like this, love. Like attract like, yes? If we would like some beneficial beings to come visit us, then we have to be also beneficial to ourselves, our environment, and other neighboring planets. We know it, you see? Right now, even if we spread the whole red carpet, the whole planet invites them, they would not come. First, they know or they think they cannot help us because we won't listen, as I told you, yes? We have to be at their level to be able to understand also. Second, they worry we might kill them before they even open their mouth or show us their technique. So maybe one day when we are more benevolent and less warlike and more peace-like, more peaceful, inside out, from the table to the outside, to the environment, then we don't worry that other planet people won't come to us. They will come and they will invite us to their place to show us extraordinary technology that we could not even think of in a dream, that we would not even know that such things exist. I just tell you one thing like a belt only, you know, traveling belt. Yeah, you put it on, push a button and can go anywhere in a flash. Yes, understand? Yes, Master. Or even use the cloud to travel. Mm. That's just one of those things. Other things, I don't have terms <laughs> for in our world. Sometimes I see it. Well, we will see. Huh? Let's hope we have that day. 
Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Many miles from yesterday before we reach tomorrow. There's lost all I waiting to be found. There's lost all I then where the sounds of guns never found again. 